Today we're going to learn about some different date formats we have inside JavaScript. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write out the date inside the browser and then talk about how we can change the dates, you know, to get a specific date. And we're also going to talk about how we can change the format of the dates. So as you guys can see right here, I have a very basic index page with a P tag that has an IDS test and inside the script tags, we have nothing. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go ahead and insert the date inside the P tags. So if I go inside the script tags, I can go ahead and say documents dot get element by ID parentheses. Of course, we need to get our ideas test, which is up here. And then afterwards, we want to say inner HTML. So we can insert something inside our P tags. Now, what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and insert the date, meaning that we can actually use a method inside JavaScript called date like so, which inserts the default date format for the time right now. So if I were to go inside my browser, you guys can see that when I refresh the browser, we get a date format. Now the date format is actually the current time, meaning that each time I refresh, you guys can see it does actually change. Now this format here does not look very pretty. It's what we call a long format inside, uh, inside JavaScript, meaning that we might want to change this up a little bit. Now, before we change the format, let's actually talk about writing out a specific date inside, you know, this date function here. Now, the way we can write out a specific date inside JavaScript is by creating something called a constructor. And if you're familiar with object oriented programming, you, you're going to know what a constructor is. Uh, but basically, we're going to create an object. And based on that object, we can then manipulate some of the information using this date function down here. So inside the script text, let's actually go ahead and create one of these constructors. I'm going to go ahead and say we have a variable called x because why not? Oh, we could actually write date because that makes sense. I'm going to set it equal to a new constructor. I'm going to call it date with a big D parentheses like so, because this is the name of our uh, constructor and we want to create an object based off this constructor here. So what we want to do here is we want to set specific parameters inside the parentheses, which is going to change it. So then when we do actually spit it out inside the browser, we can actually decide which state we want to spit out inside the browser. So what I can do now is I can actually go ahead and just say, instead of spitting out the date function, let's spit out the date variable, which means that we get this date up here. Now, if I were to refresh the browser, you guys can see we get the exact same thing because this is the default format and we didn't actually change anything inside the parentheses here. So what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and print out three different uh, types of formats inside, at least inside the parameter here that will give us a specific date. Now, when we do this, you guys need to know about uh, the starting time that we're going to print out the date from because back in the days when they did actually create this uh, date function here, they decided that, well, we need to start somewhere and count the time from that specific date in order to get a new date. Now, if that doesn't really make sense, let me actually go ahead and demonstrate what I'm talking about. Now, back in the days when they decided, okay, we need to start the date from now was back in 1970 at the 1st of January at 0, 0, 0, 0 time. Meaning that right now, if I were to go inside my date parentheses here and write, well, let's say five, which is five milliseconds, and then go ahead and refresh the browser, you guys can see that we now get a new date. Right now it's set to 1970, which was the date I talked about being the starting date. And based off this date here, we can actually go ahead and set a time format. So let's say, you know, of course, right now we wrote five inside the parentheses, meaning that, you know, it doesn't actually know how to count five because that's not a lot. Let's actually go ahead and write a thousand instead, just to show you guys. Now do notice that the, the back number is going to change into a one because we just changed the you know, the, what we put inside the parentheses here, if I were to write something a lot bigger, you guys can see it's going to count forward the amount of milliseconds that I just wrote in, which right now is January 04, this date here or this, uh, this year at this time. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and write, uh, you know, the date using uh, milliseconds as one of the default methods we can write out a date. Now you might be asking, why do we need to learn how to do it in milliseconds? Because it doesn't really make sense to do it in that way because we can't really predict when it's going to hit uh, that specific date or, you know, we don't know which day we typed inside the parentheses, but in the future, when we do need to set stuff and we need to be precise using time, uh, it's a really good way to do it. 
So in the future, we will actually be using it for some kind of exercise. Now, the second form you can write it in is using a string, which means that we can actually go inside the parentheses and write out a specific string, of course, using double quotes. Uh, we could, for example, say we have a date we want to write inside the browser, uh, which is, for example, 2016-12, which is the month right now, dash, let's say 29, because that's the date today. If I were to refresh the browser now, you guys can see we get a, another format. Now, as you guys can see, we get a new date inside the browser and the date we're getting is exactly what I typed in inside the parentheses. It's December 29th, 2016, which is what we typed in, but we still get it in this weird long format, which I talked about, uh, which we're gonna learn how to change later on. So the third way we can write something inside the date uh, constructor in here is by writing out the time and separating it by a comma. So if we were to delete what we have in here, which is called a date string, and instead write, let's say we want to get 1999, I'm gonna go ahead and say 99, comma, 06, which is going to be the month, comma, I'm gonna say 11, which is going to be the day, comma, we can say hours, let's say we have 12, comma, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So this is how we can set a date using this format here using commas, you know, by creating different parameters. If I were to refresh the browser now, you guys can see we get a new date, we get 1999, something, 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 which is the last way we can actually write this inside the date constructor. Now, of course, right now, as you guys can see, we don't get something that is really useful if we need to, for example, write the date inside a website because this doesn't look very pretty. So now that we learned how to write a specific date inside the browser using a constructor, let's actually talk about how to change the format that we see inside the browser. Now I do want to correct one thing as well, which is that I did actually call this format a long date. This is actually called a full date, not a long date, okay? So going inside our code again, we're gonna go ahead and change out the format that we see inside the browser. Now, one thing I need to mention is that what we have here when we create a constructor automatically converts the date into a string, meaning that if we were to go behind the variable date down here and write the function called to string, parentheses, which converts the date into a string, it does the exact same thing as not having it at all. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because we can actually convert it to other types of formats using uh, other functions behind the date here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to what we call a UTC string, which is a, another format that we have inside the date, which is another format we have when we want to write the date. So I'm gonna go ahead and say UTC string. I'm gonna go ahead and save this, go inside the browser, and as you guys can see, we get a new time format. Now this one looks a lot better because we can actually you know, make sense of it. We don't get a bunch of stuff behind it, and it just looks so much better. Now what we can do as well is we can go and change this to something else called to date string, which is mainly something to make it easier for us to see the date. So I can actually say to date string, refresh the browser, and as you guys can see, we get it even simpler. So depending on which uh, function you use behind your variable or just behind a constructor, you can go ahead and change the, the date format inside the browser to, to something much more simple, as you guys can see. So now that we talked about how to output the date inside the browser in a more simple way, let's actually talk about some different formats we can write the date inside the constructor parentheses, because right now what we've talked about so far is different ways to write out a specific date, but we haven't talked about some different formats we have inside the date constructor. So what we can do here is we can actually go ahead and write out what we call a ISO date. And do bear in mind, this is actually what we call a date string method, meaning that we have double quotes. And I'm gonna go ahead and write out a date here. So I'm gonna say 2015. I'm gonna say dash 03 or 04, dash 12, capitalized T, 01, colon 34, colon 12. And then a set at the end, which means that we're setting this as a UTC format, just like we did down here at the bottom here. So when we do it this way, basically what we're doing is we're setting the, the year, the month, the date, the hour, the minute, and the seconds. And then what we want to do is we want to separate with a T to say that we're adding more than just the date, we're adding time behind it. Now the set over here, like I said, is the UTC format, so we need to have that um, so if I were to go inside the browser now and actually delete what we have back here, which is called date string, refresh the browser. As you guys can see, we get a new date, which is actually the date that I wrote inside the browser using the logical format that we just wrote inside the code. Now, another way we can write a date is by going back inside the string here, 
And instead, we can write something called a short date. Now a short date is, for example, if we say 05 forward slash 12 forward slash 2015, which means that we now have the month, the day, and the year. So if I go back inside the browser, you guys can see that now it changed again. And we now have the month, day, and year. Now the last one we're gonna talk about is the one called a long date, which is the one I, I confused the default format with, which is actually the full date. Uh, but the long date is when we go in and instead of writing it this way, we actually write the date using letters. So if we were to say we want to have March 15, 2015, we can write it this way. I can go ahead and save it, refresh the browser. And as you guys can see, we now get March 2015 to 15th. We can also do it a different way. We can actually go ahead and switch around 15 with March if we want to, like so. This does the exact same thing. We can also go ahead and write out the full month if we want to, does the exact same thing. And it's just a very basic way to write out a date in case you guys want to write the date inside the browser. Now, the last form we need to talk about is what we call a full date, which is actually just when we remove anything we have inside of here, like so. Refresh the browser, and then you guys can see we get this format inside the browser here. Now, the idea here is that we can actually take the sort of date that we have here, and I could actually go ahead and copy it, like so, and paste it inside my date constructor. And I will actually get this date, which is called a full date format. So these are some of the different formats we have inside the date constructor, inside the date function we have, uh, in order to write out a date inside the browser using JavaScript. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.